Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service here at Every Nation Melbourne Northeast. I'm Pastor Larry, and it's great to have you with us in our service today. Well, here at Every Nation Melbourne Northeast, our vision is that we want to encourage people to love God with all your heart, to love people, and to serve the nations. And so we are praying for the nations, we're, we're serving the nations, and we want to disciple the nations. And one way we do that is through our life groups. And we have life groups all over the city here, and it's on various nights and days of the week. And so we want to encourage you, if you're not part of one, uh, please pray about joining one of our life groups. And if you would like to, just message us and we'll connect you with a life group near you. One exciting thing that happened uh, to our church uh, last weekend, uh, this the Easter weekend, was uh, we had our very first church camp. And we had uh, 84 at, that attended, and it was a, just a great time together, building and, and friendships and stronger, uh, encouraging each other with our faith and praying for one another. And it was just a great time. And actually, our, uh, our theme for the camp was building unity to build and reach the community. And that really happened. I, I tell you, I, I've never seen... Uh, People cheer so much for people going down flying foxes or uh, canoeing together and everybody was cheering each other on. It was just a great, great time at just building uh, greater friendships. Well, we're in a series this month that we've called Why Jesus? And last week being that it was Easter, we talked about this, why Jesus lived, died, and rose. And basically, uh, to sum it all up, uh, we can find it in 1 John uh, 3, 8. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. And the enemy is out, we know, to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give life and life to the full. And he has called us as believers not to be in our situations of doom and gloom and despair all the time. He's called us to live that resurrection-powered life. And it's when we receive Jesus as a risen Savior, then we can receive the victory that we have in His name. And so, as we read in 1 John 3, 8, the reason why Jesus came was to destroy the enemy's work. So don't settle for the, the defeated life. Live for that victorious life that we have in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Come on. So... Uh, today we're going to hit this topic, and I've called it, Why Jesus Revealed Himself. So after Jesus rose from the dead, He was still on earth for 40 days. And so that really, you know, brings a lot of questions. It's like, why? Why, Jesus? Why did you stay on earth for 40 days? What did you do in those 40 days? What was the purpose of the 40 days? So we're going to try to tackle that in uh, the, the brief time that we have together. But let me just pray. Lord, I pray that you would reveal your anointing, reveal your presence, reveal yourself to us today through this word. And I pray, Lord God, let faith arise in our hearts to believe that you are alive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, the first thing I wanted to highlight was this scripture in, first, in Acts 1-3. It says, He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. So in the 40 days that Jesus was on earth, he made a different appearances, speaking to and declaring the kingdom, that his kingdom is come. His will is being done. And um, I wanted to highlight uh, these appearances. So Jesus appeared 11 times to different groups of people. He appeared to Mary Magdalene at, at the garden tomb. He appeared to Mary and Salome and, and Joanna also at, at the garden tomb when, when he arose. He appeared to Peter and the two men in Emmaus Road, the disciples, and when Thomas wasn't there, uh, then seven disciples fishing. If you recall and remember that when, when Jesus made the statement to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Okay, that was that account there. And then uh, Thomas plus Jesus. So, uh, I mean, the disciples with Thomas. So there was another account. The disciples were all together and Thomas was there. And then uh, the mountain in Galilee, 500 people, and then James, James who, who was Jesus' half-brother, 
this significant encounter with, with James that Jesus had transformed James' life. So James was not a disciple when Jesus was, um, you know, on earth. And so this encounter proved to James that Jesus was the Messiah and he transformed. He, James became the, the pillar in the early church in, in Jerusalem and eventually died for his faith. And so this was a significant moment for James's life. And then uh, Paul, Apostle Paul. So I'm going to highlight two of these accounts and just really focus on, on these um, experiences. Uh, the first one I want to highlight is uh, the disciples plus Thomas. So it's Thomas experience. And it, bas- it, it kind of like helps us deal with this uh, question or, or statement that we have all the time. I'll, I'll believe it when I see it and feel it. You know, how many of us have said that before? Oh yeah, I'll, I'll believe. I'll believe Jesus if you heal me. I'll believe Jesus if I see a miracle. I believe if I feel the goosebumps. And so this encounter is dealing with this statement, and it's found in in uh, John twenty and starting from verse twenty five. It says, "So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord." So, but he said to them, which is Thomas, uh, "Unless I see his hands." And the mark on the nail, mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, um, and place my hand into his side. I will never believe. And so um, he's addressing and saying, you know, I'll believe it if I can feel it, and if I can see it. And then what happens is twenty verse twenty six. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with with them, although the doors were locked. Quite interesting, right? So the doors were all locked, and then Jesus came and stood among them. So Jesus went through the walls. Quite incredible. He's in his heavenly body. So he appears to them, and he said, Peace be with you. Why did he say that? Because they were probably afraid. Oh, no, a ghost, you know. And so he said, Peace, peace be with you. Verse 27 and 28, then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and play and see my hands and put your put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. So Thomas saw and Thomas felt and he realized Jesus is Lord. Jesus is alive. And Jesus said this statement to him in verse 29, uh, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And I believe this statement Jesus is making is for us. Blessed are all of us. We may not have this this experience like Thomas to uh, physically touch and to see the the nails in Jesus, the, the holes in Jesus' hands from the nails, or his, his wound on the side. But we believe even though we have not seen. And so this is how we live as Christians today, is we are believing by faith of these accounts. And we're believing by faith of these testimonies and experiences of like Thomas, of what he's experienced. And why was it so significant? Because we see later that Thomas became a tremendous missionary. He brought the gospel, many believe, all the way to India, where eventually he was martyred for his faith and, and, and speared you know, in his side. And you know, a person would not go through that if they did not fully believe, if they didn't have a significant moment in their life where they knew without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is Lord. They had something to live for and even to die for. And I'm telling you that we need to be a people that we believe. Yes, we may not physically see the nails in Jesus' hands. We may not physically feel it at times, but we believe by faith that Jesus died and rose from the dead. And when that faith in Him comes into us and we sense that all of a sudden now, we are able to live out this life for Him. We are able to live that resurrected life anointed life for the Lord. It goes on in verse 30 and 31. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, 
But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The whole purpose of these examples and why this is written in Scripture is so that when we believe, we can have life and a new life, a transformed life, a life that glorifies God. You see, the Lord wants that in our, in our, for us, that we live for Him and serve Him and not live bound by all the sinfulness and all the discouragements and all the bondages of life that the enemy tries to put on us and all the, these strongholds that he tries to pull us down and to, the weight, you know, it's the weight and the stresses of life of the world, you know, all these things. What about the future and what about this house and what about the job and what about the relationship? The enemy tries to throw all this. When we serve the Lord, all of that doesn't matter anymore because we know that when we serve the Lord, He will give us the right things at the right time. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto us. You see, when we serve God in full obedience, then God pours out His blessing, His encouragement, His strength for our lives, and His will will be done. At camp, we got opportunity to baptize uh, five people in water. And, and it was such a great time for hearing the testimonies of Dennis and Mavi and Edward and, and Lana and Ken when they shared about how they served the Lord and received Christ and now want to serve Him in obedience and baptism. I tell you, man, we were so excited and our faith was built up because we could see that they now have found a new life in Christ. And they wanted to tell the whole world in baptism, I am serving the Lord. I am no longer living for myself anymore. You see, that's the glorious thing about water baptism is where it's an open testimony of what we've already believed, that we are confessing Jesus is my Lord. We may not see him, but we know he is real and he is alive. The next one example I wanted to highlight was the two men on the Emmaus Road. And this experience is, is going to highlight um, this statement, I'll believe it when I live it. I believe it when I live it. It's interesting that when you look at the 11 accounts, that four of them at least is highlighted in Scripture that they did not recognize the Lord. Now, I found that very interesting. You know, it's almost like a goosebump moment for me as I was reading the, the Scriptures and studying this because it's an example for us to see that the Lord is speaking to us that he wants to reveal himself to us and many times we don't even realize he's there now look at this example in Luke uh, 24 uh, 15 to 16 it says while they were talking and discussing together Jesus himself drew near and went with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him they didn't can you imagine that it's like, hello, you've been with Jesus at least for maybe three years, you know, uh, experiencing him, seeing him in Jerusalem, seeing him doing ministry, and then he's right there with you, walking with you, and you don't recognize him? You don't know it's Jesus? What's up with that? Maybe Jesus was hiding himself. Maybe he was in his resurrected body, and so that, that's why he was disguising himself. They couldn't recognize him. We're not exactly sure, but it says that, that their eyes were not open. And maybe they were just so consumed in their own situation, their own depression, because Jesus had, had died on the cross. And so they, they thought, oh, there's no hope. See, look at their discussion in verse uh, 17 and 18. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you are uh, holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. See, they were kind of depressed, right? And he says, one of them said, named uh, Cleopas, answered, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? He's saying, don't you know that Jesus went to the cross? Don't you know they put him in the tomb? So they didn't know that Jesus rose again yet. Maybe they didn't hear the news and, and all of this. So they were, they were discouraged. And I could just imagine these guys walking on the road, their head down, so discouraged. Oh no, they, they, are, they killed our Savior. They killed our Lord. Oh no, what are we going to do now? And, and they're in this mode and Jesus walks by them and starts hearing their conversation and starts talking to them. 
And so they're so discouraged they cannot see Jesus. How many times has happened to us? We're so discouraged. We're so consumed with our problem. We don't have a job. We, the doctor gave us a bad report. Uh, our family is sick. And so we're so discouraged we don't see Jesus. We don't see His promises. We don't see that He's come through in the past for us. We don't see and remember that He's healed us before. And so we're so blinded that we don't see Jesus. And so later Jesus goes with them and, and fellowships with them in the house and breaks bread. And it says in Luke, in Luke 24, verse uh, 30 and 31, And when he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. Whoa, can you imagine? Only when he broke bread, all of a sudden their eyes were opened. And then they realize this is Jesus. And then it says he vanished. Well, can you imagine that experience? Wow, what an incredible moment. And then in verse 32, then they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Only when we realize Jesus is real, Jesus is alive, Jesus is present with us. Then all of a sudden we understand, wow, yeah, His Word is alive. His Word is like a fire in us. His Word is burning, you know, and, and, and when I stepped out in faith before, all of a sudden I saw that God was moving. Oh, yeah, I remember He healed me before. Oh, yeah, I remember, you know, that, that when we got together and prayed, God answered the prayer. All of a sudden our eyes are open and we begin to realize and see that Jesus is real and Jesus is alive. When we get our eyes off of our problems and get our eyes focused on the Lord. You see, Jesus reveals himself to, through his word to us. He reveals himself through others and when they pray for us and encourage us. He reveals himself even when we begin to serve and, and reach out and help others. Uh, people experience the love of Christ through us. And so that's why in, in John 1, 14, it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory. Jesus came to earth as a human form and to tell us and to show us what, what he is like. And, and, you know, the word became flesh. Jesus lived out the word of God and he taught us how we should live in this life. What a great example. But also... Uh, he is, is speaking to us in the same way. Now, as we experience his word and read his word, now we can live out his message to the world and we can reveal Christ to others. That's why the word of God is so important and experiencing his presence every day is so important. That's why the enemy is going to try to stop you from reading his word. Don't let him do that. We need to refresh ourselves with the word of God. Let it be a part of us every day. Worship him. Spend time with the Lord. When we do that, it's going to change and transform lives and our lives as well. In Acts 4.13, it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and they perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished, and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. You see, when we spend time with the Lord in prayer, in the Word, people are going to recognize that we have been with Jesus and the Word of God is going to come forth in a greater boldness and we're going to have a greater conviction in our heart to live out this Word and to boldly say, no, no, I'm not going to live like that. I'm going to live righteous for Jesus. I'm going to serve Him and our, our words are going to change and not be so cur curt and hurting and, and harsh with our words and, and we're going to be kind and more gentle with our words. The Word transforms our lives. I like this in Jeremiah, one of my favorite verses, 20 verse 9. It says, but if I say I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire. <laughs> Come on. We need this word in us like a fire. Shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding in. Indeed, I cannot. 
When we get the Word in us, it's just we're so filled up with the Word of God. We can't keep it in. We just got to speak it out. And we don't have to say chapter and verse all the time to people around us in our workplaces. No, we're speaking the Word of God. And as we're sharing the Word of God with others and we're, and we're saying that, that um, you know, yes, you know, I'm, I'm caring for you. I, I, I want to serve you. I want to help you. And when we're saying words like that, it's actually the Word of God because the Word of God tells us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. The Word of God encourages us to serve others. The Word of God encourages us to be kind and gentle and, and have self-control. And as we apply the Word of God to our lives, it's going to change and transform our lives, our families, and others even around us. You see, in uh, 2, Peter, uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, it says, All Scripture is breathed out by God. Can you imagine? God breathed into man what man breathed out and wrote the Word of God. So Scripture, you got to understand, is God breathing. As we read the Scripture, as we speak the Word of God, it's God's breathing into us. Come on, the life-giving Word. And it says, and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. And maybe sometimes some of us are grumbling and complaining. We're saying, God, how can I live this life? It's so hard. It's so difficult. Why do you leave me alone? Why am I here? You know, I'm, I still don't have any relationships or I don't have my job yet or I'm in financial trouble. God, what, what, don't you see what I'm going through? God has given us everything we need, and that's the Word of God. And as we read the Word of God, we're breathing His life into us, and is saying the Word of God will teach us righteousness. The Word of God will reprove us and correct us to live righteous. The Word of God will train us in righteousness. The Word of God, when it gets in us, helps us to think right, to live right, and to speak right. The Word of God in us is the hope of glory. We need to speak it out and live it out. And it says we'll be equipped for every good work. We have all that we need is in the Word of God. We're going to be equipped for all the things that God has called us to do. That's why the Word is so important. Apostle Paul wrote this and kind of summarized this whole message. And he says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 4 to 7, it says that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas, who was Peter, and then to the twelve. And then he appeared to more than 500 others at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles. But I love this. Then he says, and verse 8, Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. Wow. Jesus appeared to Apostle Paul on the Damascus Road when Apostle Paul was persecuting the Christians. He was a Pharisee, a religious leader, and he was so zealous for the law, but yet he caused him to persecute Christians. And when Jesus met him, Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And that meeting totally transformed uh, Paul's life from a murderer to become a missionary. And he became the greatest uh, church planter. It's quite incredible. And Paul says this statement also in verse 14. And he says, If Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. This encounter that he had with Jesus, the risen Savior, changed his life forever. And that's why he was saying this statement, you know, if Jesus had not been raised, our preaching is in vain. If Jesus was not raised, we would be like just any other religion. But because Jesus came back to life, now we have resurrection power. We have the, the we're the only religion that can say that we serve a risen Savior. And so, Jesus revealed transformed lives. When we understand that Jesus reveals himself to us, then our lives will be changed. I want to encourage us that we can experience Jesus, this resurrection power. We can experience a revelation of Jesus every day. Don't let your eyes be blinded um, by your problems. 
that you miss Jesus. He can minister to us through people. He can minister us through this message today. He can minister even through his word, especially. So why Jesus reveals himself, it's so that we will believe and be a witness for him. As I close today, I want to read this verse of scripture that Apostle Paul wrote as well. In Romans 10, uh, verse 8, it says, But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with your heart one believes and is justified, and with your mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to invite you to say a prayer with me, to receive him even right now. If you can just pray with me. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross and rose from the dead for my sins. Forgive me of all the wrong things that I've done. And help me this day to live for you, to serve you with all of my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, I pray for those that have received you in their life for the first time, or maybe they're rededicating their life to you. Today I pray, let your resurrection power so fill their lives that they will know, Lord God, that you are with them. You will never leave them nor forsake them. Now, Lord God, Father, give them, Lord God, faith to change, to transform, to turn around, Lord, in situations of their life. And I thank you, Lord God, let hope arise in their heart, in Jesus' name. And I pray for the rest of us, Lord God, that you would so encourage us, Lord, with this word, that you revealed yourself to us so that we could have life and life to the full, so that we could have resurrection power, so that our faith will be strong to believe, not only for ourselves, so that we can, Lord God, share it with others around us. So I pray, Lord God, for a greater anointing on your people today, that we will be a greater witness for you, because you are alive. We thank you, Lord God, that you're revealing yourself to us every day every day how great and how mighty you are in jesus name amen amen well bless you and i want to thank you for joining us in our service today and if you are in melbourne you can go to our website at every nation uh, or dot and you can register for our live service to join us at belfield community hall and we also want to worship the Lord as we close today uh, with our online giving. You can uh, give to our account here. And it's one way that we worship the Lord uh, through our giving. And we also want to worship the Lord in song. So as we uh, end today, uh, we're going to worship the Lord. And uh, we just want to thank you for joining us in our service. Let me just pray a blessing over you. Lord, I just pray a blessing over your people today. I thank you for your anointing, your encouragement, your strength. Lord, I pray that you would heal those that need a healing touch today. And I pray, Lord God, that they will know that you are alive. And because you are alive, we can be alive too. So I claim victory for all of us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Well, bless you. Thank you for joining us. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you.